Hi there, my name is Martin Bissig. I am an action and sports photographer based in Switzerland and I am a Canon ambassador. What I'm holding here in my hand is, in my view, the best camera ever built. It's the new Canon EOS R5. It is the long-awaited successor of Canon's first full-frame mirrorless camera, the Canon EOS R, that was released two or two and a half years back. Now, besides being an awesome camera for still photography, it also sets a new level as a filming camera. I was lucky enough to test the camera here for a full week and I would like to share with you my experience. Due to the fact that I'm a still photographer, a big part of this video will actually cover still photography and the functions of the camera as a photography camera. However, at the end of this video, I will also review the video functions. So let's start with the hardware. One thing that I noticed when I grabbed the camera for the first time and I held it in my hands, it really felt great. The R5 is slightly bigger and heavier than the EOS R, but it feels much more robust and valuable. The top and the back covers are made of the same magnesium alloy as the 1DX Mark III. That means the whole body is stiffer and has a superb heat dissipation. It is weather sealed the same way as the 5D Mark IV and the shutter durability has been increased to 500,000 actuations. If you're coming from a 5D Mark IV or the 1DX Mark III, you will love the tilt and flip screen. Personally, I couldn't live without it anymore. With the camera came an upgraded version of the battery. The new battery has about 15% more capacity than the old version. And the really cool thing is, the old and the new batteries are fully compatible. That means you can either use the old version of the battery in your R5, or you can use the new battery that came with that camera and use it in the EOS R or in the 5D Mark IV as well. The R5 has two card slots. Uh, one slot is for the new Compact Flash Express card and the other one for a regular SD memory card. A huge improvement versus the EOS R is the new high-resolution electronic viewfinder of the R5. It uses a 0.5-inch 5.7 million dot high-definition LCD. Now that's almost 60% more resolution that I have on this viewfinder compared to the EOS R. And additionally, the R5 offers approximately twice the display frame rate. In the menu, I can choose between smoothness priority with 120 frames per second or the power saving mode with roughly 60 frames per second. The higher frame rate in the electronic viewfinder is a great thing for me as an action photographer. Now it's so much easier for me to track quickly moving subjects and fast action actually looks so much smoother in the electronic viewfinder. I think that's a huge step forward coming from the EOS R and I almost cannot tell the difference anymore between an analog viewfinder and the new and improved viewfinder of the R5. Now let's have a look at a tiny but for many of you very important piece of hardware. This one back here, the multi-controller. For me, working with the EOS R for the last two years, I honestly haven't missed the multi-controller much. I've got used to work without it and I have adapted my workflow. If you are going to switch from any advanced models of the EOS series like the 5D Mark or the 1DX, you will love the fact that you can use the R5 almost the same way as you are using your current DSLR. The multi-controller allows you to quickly select and adjust the autofocus frame. In order to address the increased number of autofocus frames with the R5, we're talking about 5,900 autofocus frames, you can adjust the sensitivity of the autofocus frame selection so that it suits you the most. For me, personally, I love the touch and drag functionality that was introduced with the EOS R. Uh, touch and drag, I can set the autofocus point by touching on the back of the LCD. This is how I set it up. 
When enabling the touch and drag autofocus, you can either choose between the absolute size of your back LCD screen or set it to relative. When you set it to relative, you can choose which part of the LCD should be sensitive to your touch. I set it to relative in the lower back side of the screen. Like that, I can quickly move it around by touching on the back screen of my camera while looking through the viewfinder. Another great improvement of the R5 over the EOS R is the in-camera image stabilization. Well, this is a first for the EOS series and it offers a 5-axis camera shake correction image stabilization. Together with the lens-based stabilizer, if it is built in, I can reduce camera shake up to approximately 8 stops. Now, check out the image that I took with only 1 fourth of a second. This photo was taken and handheld at 1 fourth of a second with the 15 to 35 mm lens that has the lens IS built in. You can see it's completely sharp. If we move over to the tree, there is some motion blur caused by the wind on the branches, but not by me as the photographer. If you're shooting with a lens that has a lens image stabilization built in, the 5-axis camera stabilization corrects camera shake across the entire zoom range. So it doesn't matter if you're using a wide-angle lens or a telephoto lens. Now, let's have a closer look at the most important feature for me as a photographer, the still photography. Canon introduces a new 45 megapixel sensor with the R5. It has higher ISO capabilities from ISO 100 to 51200 and one stop less noise compared to the 5D Mark IV. And it also offers a higher dynamic range. Compared to the 5DSR with a resolution of 50 megapixels, the R5 resolves the same amount of details despite 5 megapixels of less resolution. Now let's check out this shot. Let's zoom in the most I can on the camera. Check out these beautiful details in the foreground and in the background. The level of detail is simply amazing. Here's another sample shot that displays the dynamic range as well as the potential of the 45 megapixel sensor. That's a screen recording straight out of the camera, so no post-production is applied on the image. This is what I see when I take the shot and when I look through the viewfinder. So let's move around a bit and check the background. It's beautiful to see the different shades of the mountains and the sharpness and the details. Also when I move down here in the image, I can clearly see the details of the hiker. And this is the final image after post-production. With the R5, I'm capable of shooting 12 frames per second with the mechanical shutter or 20 frames per second with the electronic shutter, and both with full autofocus tracking. Here are a couple of sample shots I was able to capture in high-speed mode. Here's a sample where I could make use of the 20 frames per second. The freestyle motocrosser covers a lot of distance within a very short period of time. So I wanted to have him framed by the flowers and there's only one position that really works. Let's quickly zoom in and see if he's in focus. Yes he is, great. So let's finish him this stunt. All in all I took 34 frames for that one jump, but only this final image works well. And that one here is another great example that shows you the importance of shooting 20 frames per second. The biker here moves even faster than a motocross before. So here's the sequence that I shot. 
Out of all these shots, only this one here works for me. If I zoom in, I can check, it's 100% sharp. If I shot this with less frames, I might have missed that perfect moment. A feature the R5 has taken from the 1DX Mark III is the possibility to shoot HAVE images in 10-bit. A HAVE image has got a lot more information than a JPEG, but has about the same file size. It's a great feature for people who do not want to shoot RAW, but want to use a file straight out of the camera. Thanks to a color depth of 10-bit, it provides an extremely wide tonal range. Now, let's move to a menu under the image settings and check out the new option I got under shutter mode. I have three different options to choose from as my shutter mode. Mechanical mode is the one mode that we know from the good old DSLRs. We don't have a problem with rolling shutter distortion or flickering. However, it is slower and noisier than an electronic shutter and for slow shutter speeds, images could be blurred due to the vibration of the mechanical shutter. The maximum frame rate when using the mechanical shutter is 12 frames per second. The option Electronic First Curtain uses the electronic shutter to start the exposure and the mechanical shutter to end it. The maximum frames per second is the same as in the mechanical. However, there is no vibration caused by the mechanical shutter and the release time lag is shorter than the mechanical shutter. Choosing Electronic as shutter mode will boost the R5 to take 20 frames per second. It does it completely silent. On the downside, rolling shutter distortion could appear as well as flickering under some light sources. Additionally, I can't use strobes in this mode. Here's a comparison of 12 frames per second versus 20 frames per second. This first sequence was shot with 12 frames per second and the mechanical shutter. Note that there's virtually no overlapping of the athlete from one frame to the next. I took a total of 23 photos to cover the whole shot. Switching to 20 frames per second with the electronic shutter, you can see that the athlete is much closer to himself when jumping from one frame to the next. Like that, I can make sure to select the perfect photo out of the total of 50 shots that I took to capture that scene in the fastest possible way. Let's have a closer look at an extremely important function for me as an extreme sports photographer, the autofocus. Well, thanks to the Digit 10 processor, high-speed and high-precision dual-pixel autofocus has been further improved. The R5 is powered by the same processor as the flagship DSLR that was introduced last year, the 1DX Mark III. The autofocus coverage area now includes the entire image. Uh, well, this all sounds good on paper, but how does it perform in real-life situation? Let's have a look. I shot this skateboarder with the fastest lens I got in order to see if the autofocus really works perfectly. He's wearing black clothes and moves in front of a pretty contrast background, so it's not the easiest task for a camera, but the R5 handles it extremely well. Out of these 25 shots, the autofocus never lost a subject and every single shot is in focus. Here's the final image I chose out of the sequence. I knew what to expect from the autofocus when I was testing the 1DX Mark III last year. Having the same or even improved autofocus in a much smaller body, um, th that allows me to get shots that I could have never done before. Now let's have a look at another high-speed example. You can see in this sequence, the autofocus never loses the rider. These are five different jumps at the same location. Not one single frame was missed by the autofocus. Shooting open wide with an aperture of 2.8 gives me a lot of creativity back, knowing for sure that I can rely on the autofocus of the R5 for 100%. The R5 works pretty amazing for action sequences. Um, the eye autofocus that was introduced with the EOS R also has undergone some great, great improvements when it comes to detecting eye or even the head. Now, let's see an example. 
I was shooting straight against the light and I had to overexpose by more than two stops, which already would be a challenge for most of the autofocus systems out there. But you can clearly see that the autofocus tracks the eye of the athlete without ever losing it. And the best thing is yet to come. Even if he turns his head around, the autofocus stays on his head and keeps locked until he turns back and the autofocus catches up on his eyes again. That's something that would have never been possible before. There are a lot more settings in the autofocus menu that helps you to customize the behavior of the autofocus. Let's quickly go through them. A new feature is that I can tell my camera to detect subjects, people, animal or no priority. If I choose animal, then dogs, cats and birds are detected. The autofocus system detects the body, the face and even the eye of the animals. One menu item below I can enable and disable the eye out of focus. I recommend to leave it enabled all the time. One feature the R5 borrowed from the 5D Mark IV and the 1DX Mark III are the servo autofocus cases. Now let's have a closer look at the menu. Case 1 is a multi-purpose setting for fast action. Case 2 tracks the subjects and ignores obstacles that may come between myself and the subject. Case 3 instantly focuses on subjects that suddenly enter the autofocus points and Case 4 is ideal for subjects that move around quickly and unpredictably. The auto case was introduced with the 1DX Mark III and it selects one of the four cases that works the best. For most of the shots I took during my testing, I let the camera decide which case was the best and the auto case didn't disappoint me at all. In almost every shot, I got perfect results. Now I would like to have a bit of a closer look at the network functions of the R5. Why do I need network functions? Well, for example, when connected this camera by Bluetooth to a smartphone, I can embed GPS information in the image. Using the Camera Connect app by Canon, I can check my shots on the phone and download them straight to my mobile device. I also use my phone as a remote control unit to release the shutter of the camera by pressing a button on my phone. A completely new feature and the first in the Canon world. The R5 is the first Canon camera with a built-in Wi-Fi that works both on the 2.4 GHz and the 5 GHz wireless LAN for high speed and stable data communications. Well, that means without any additional hardware, I can transfer my images and videos over Wi-Fi to an FTP server or into the Canon cloud. That's a great thing for folks who need to transfer shots during a live event. Now that I have covered the still photography capabilities, let's have a look at the film options the R5 has to offer. I am mainly a still photographer, but video nowadays is getting more and more important and a lot of my clients ask me to shoot video as well. Now with the R5 in my hands, I can be sure to deliver results that were, well at least up until now, only thinkable with a much bigger and much more professional film camera. With the R5 now, I can shoot videos up to 8K in 12-bit RAW with or without Canon Log. And I can shoot super slow motion in 4K with 120 frames per second or 4K in 24, 25, 30, 50 or even 60 frames in 8 or 10 bit with or without Canon Log. And all that internally without a crop and the full autofocus function. Let's have a closer look at the new and in my view much improved menu for video. Instead of going through tons of video options with every possible combination, Canon now made it much easier to navigate through resolution, frame rates and compression. When clicking through the resolution, I automatically see which frame rate and which compression is available.
A great new feature for me is the possibility to shoot super slow motion in 4K. I therefore can enable the high frame rate in the menu. You can see that my resolution jumps to 4K with 100 frames per second when I enable it. 100 frames per second is the maximum if you shoot PAL, 120 frames per second is if you shoot NTSC. For obvious reasons, audio is not recorded when you shoot super slow motion. Another new feature thanks to the 8K sensor is to shoot 8K oversampled for enhanced 4K resolution. How does that work technically? Each 4K image is generated from the 8K RGB data, so every single pixel on the 8K sensor is used to record color. The result? A high quality 4K image file with more detailed footage, better colors and less noise. Shooting in 4K is a great feature, but who needs to shoot in 8K? Nowadays, there are most of the output devices that still cannot display 8K footage. Well, if you want to crop, 8K is awesome. Here's an 8K footage. To fill a 4K timeline, I scale it down to 50%. If used at 100% in a 4K timeline, the footage looks like this. If I work in a full HD timeline, I can zoom in four times without losing quality. As you can imagine, shooting with this camera in 8K or 4K with 120 frames, a lot of data needs to be processed. To prevent overheating of the sensor, the recording time is limited to roughly 20 minutes when shooting in 8K and 25 to 30 minutes when shooting in 4K. As I said in the beginning, I had a full week of testing with the camera and the main focus was still photography. If you want to know more about filming, I'm sure there are some really cool and more detailed reviews out there very soon. Until then, have fun taking pictures and stay creative.